Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ogden, and thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, our speakers today will be Karen Thurber and John Hines will be telling us about their experience at General Assembly, and Holly Leak will be our uh, Master of Ceremonies. Before we get going, I just have a few announcements. So first off, we would like to restart uh, the membership committee. So, and we're looking for volunteers. So the membership committee is responsible for reaching out to potential new members and helping them become a part of the church, along with keeping up with current members and making sure that uh, basically no one's falling through the cracks. If you'd be interested in being a part of this, please let me know. Uh, it's a very important committee and it's one I think that we really need. So please let me know if you can help us out with this. Uh, it would be very, very valuable. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is hosting an interfaith concert in the Ogden, Utah Tabernacle on Sunday, September 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, admission is free and tickets are not needed. However, if we'd like to sit in an area as a group, we can. Please let me know if you'd like to come and I can get you tickets. And then finally, while this is not a UUCO event, uh, we've been asked to advertise. I think there might be some interest among members here. There will be a vegan potluck at Mount Ogden Park on Saturday, August 19th. So next Saturday at 11 a.m. And all are welcome to attend. All right. And with that, we'll get started on our service. Thank you. Well, you are welcome. So welcome again. <laughs> Dylan has the announcement. So it's, we're sort of sharing duties here. Uh, my name is Holly Leak, and I'm a member of this church, have been for a while. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Um, this is a church that welcomes everyone. I think if we have one word that sums us up, that word is love. So we're glad to have you here. And we hope that you feel the love in this space. You know, um, it strikes me that maybe I was supposed to have some words before we light the chalice, but I didn't look those up. <laughs> so I don't really have those, but um, we light our chalice as a symbolic um, gesture of our unity and our, our membership and our celebration together. And Jim has volunteered to come up and light the chalice. So thank you, Jim. The chalice lighting words, are in the order of service, which we don't really have, but we kind of know them. So we light it, warmth of love, light of truth, energy of action. We light this chalice for the warmth of love, for the light of truth, and for the energy of action. That was a lot of fun to have my kids learn back in the day, the way that that goes. Um, our opening hymn is in our hardback hymnal. It's hymn number 347. Gather the spirit, number three, four, seven, gather the spirit. And feel free to stand if you are able to. So, 
more than the comforts of community. It also has to provide opportunities for deepening, for what I call spiritual growth, and for the casting down of false images and stereotypes, which hurt us all. A good religion has to open us to the, to the real diversity of our modern world. For our work as liberal religious people is not to be competitive with others and to find ways to supersede others, but rather to find ways to supersede ourselves, to grow beyond our limitations and our constrictive boundaries, each and every one of us. Diversity, you see, must not end up being some sort of feel-good slogan, a word we keep in our back pocket to make us feel like we're broad-minded. Diversity is a gift, but it cannot be a gift unless it is received. It is only received when there are hands and hearts open enough to receive it. And the opening of fists into welcoming hands and welcoming hearts is our spiritual work. Okay, today we have a super treat. Um, if you've never been to a general assembly, or even if you have, today you're gonna get to hear what it was like for two of our members to get to go to GA. And they've got a PowerPoint and are gonna share lots of things with us, especially also about the new um, principles, right? The new um, structure of all that and the wording. So uh, Karen and John are going to come up and run a PowerPoint and share their experiences with us. Okay. You going to have a screen here. Karen uh, is the uh, professional presenter. <laughs> put together the PowerPoint. And then I only came in at the last minute. I contributed and I did some editing and caused it is. considerable no. turmoil. <laughs> if it all works out smoothly, tell Karen how good that was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> okay. Uh, all righty, we just have to go to.
Uh, let me start off as uh, they would in the uh, General Assembly by giving some personal descriptors. Uh, I am, as you are here, can see a Caucasian. Sorry, the microphone's out of batteries apparently, so we're going to use the one on my computer. Okay, so. I am a Caucasian male with gray hair and a trim beard. Uh, I am wearing a flower motif Hawaiian type shirt. Um, and um, that's all I wanted to say about that. We are uh, coming here on lands that were at one time Shoshone, Ute, Paiute who came here after the Fremont uh, people were here and we feel grateful to be here. Um, the reason I'm giving you this is to acknowledge the gratitude we have for the people before us and also to uh, acknowledge our role perhaps and to let people who do not have the abilities that we have to see and hear what's going on, uh, the opportunity to know a little more of what's going on. It's a matter of inclusion. And at the, a, uh, the GA, uh, we were overwhelmed by this sense of trying to include and empower everyone. From the very get-go, when we, uh, registered for the AG, we started getting emails. Um, we got links to uh, things that we could um, read and ways to uh, prepare uh, to get ready for this whole thing. It was just amazing how much time and effort had been put forward up front to have us prepared to go to this event. So the event happened in Pittsburgh. Has anybody been to Pittsburgh? Okay, recently, relatively recent. Pittsburgh, in my mind, was coal and steel mills and rust belt and smoke and just, well, that's not Pittsburgh. That's what Pittsburgh was once. Pittsburgh is this lovely city that sits below the Monongahela River and above the Allegheny, which come together in this nice point and outflows the Ohio, the city of three rivers. And this area in the middle has been transformed. It's been changed into this beautiful place with lovely buildings. It's walkable from where we were staying in the uh, Airbnb across the river. I could walk in a park and then onto the bridge and a couple of blocks to the conference center. Most of my walk, half my walk was in park or on the bridge. It was gorgeous. It was like walking to Codger Coffee from my house. It was only a mile or so. It was just delightful. And it was a, a bikeable city. Uh, there were bike paths along the river and there were bike lanes in the town and the traffic seemed to be quite used to bicyclists changing lanes and moving through. It was wonderful. And it was bussable. We found that after a day at the conference center, we could step out, walk across the street from there down a block and jump on a bus that then took us right to the front door of our Airbnb. It was just wonderful, so convenient. Okay, once we got in the door, at the convention center, we came up with a lot of people converging. We walked in, stepped into an elevator that was crammed with people and the electricity and energy was contagious. People were introducing themselves. They were all babbling. It was amazing. From the get-go, 
we stepped off of that elevator into this huge grand hall made, well, always made for masses of people. And we were not a mass of people when we stepped out. We did not fill that conference center. We hardly, we used maybe half of it. But people just kind of wandered in together. We got our, our registration uh, IDs and everything. And almost immediately, people were talking to each other. People had purpose. Uh, it was such a thrill to have, it was like a family reunion. You, you don't recognize people, but you know that you're related somehow and you're doing the same thing. It was just electric. It was really quite wonderful. Um, one of the things that was really quite uh, pronounced to me from, from walking in is the diversity of people there. In our congregation, over the years, we have had some pretty good diversity. We've had kids, Gabriel, Eli, all the, there's so many. And we've had elders, um, Brian and Bev and, uh, and more. It's just, it's been really good. We've had some color in our community. We had J-Rod for a while and Ashley down in the nursery. We've had different cultures, different uh, origins. Christina from Guadalajara and where's back in the back. Nelly from Ukraine. We've had people from all over and it just really enriches us. What we had there was all this diversity right at the same time everywhere. We had scooters and wheelchairs and uh, just, it was so invigorating. I was really thrilled by it all. So um, one of the things that happened quite frequently is that they would uh, interrupt proceedings, not interrupt, integrate into the proceedings music. And in a way I thought of it as an interlude from the heavy topics and things that were going on. But it was more like a blending of different approaches to get the point across. We had um, maybe a rousing speech, spiritual engagement, followed by folk music, which gave you time to take some of the emotion of that presentation together. And then we'd have something that was more like um, a sociology lecture, really dense with you know things you needed to focus on. And then it was a rock concert. It was really well integrated. And this Reggie Harris was uh, a fascinating presentation. He played off a fellow musician. They met and uh, worked together and they were able to uh, talk about discrimination and racial injustice by telling and singing their life history from growing up in different neighborhoods with different backgrounds and how they came together through music and have been able to reach out to people through that. It was, it was just fascinating, just rich. These presentations uh, like this particular one, are just really well done. And I think that as a whole, our culture has gone away from taking the time to sit down, focus, and listen. And this was an opportunity where you gathered with a whole bunch of people who sat quietly and paid attention to some profound thinking. It was really, you know how you get that feeling when you're at a, a game or a concert or something and everybody is just so focused on one thing? Yeah, it was like that. So, uh,
I don't. Oh, you're not even seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, the uh, I, did I mention diversity and inclusion <laughs> and empowerment? Those were just, they weren't themes underlying it. They were the overarching uh, goal of the whole thing. It's really quite good. Um, in the exhibit hall, the exhibit hall was set up so that individual organizations within the uh, umbrella here were able to have booths. And Karen was, uh, this is my picture with Karen right here. And she is uh, reaching out to all of the theological seminaries, all the ministerial schools. And she is taking our little flyer up there saying, we could use a minister. Do you have any to spare? <laughs> so, um, Karen, how many graduates of the schools normally are there? Uh, About 50? Normally, uh, there are um, uh, 55 is what they said is the average number of graduates who go into, there are more graduates than that, but who actually go into congregation work. This year, there were 11 this last year. And what they're finding is that more and more um, graduates are going to community ministry. And we actually went to a meet and greet uh, with the Community Ministry Association just to find out what they were about and how that worked in case that might be an option for us. And so this is a problem. And so this was the first year ever in the history of the UA that a, they had more demand for uh, ministers from congregations that were available. Well, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, also in this uh, ex exhibit hall, there were all sorts of fellow traveler organizations or organizations of directly affiliated. There was the successor to the Hemlock Society that uh, worked with Jack Kervorkian on a uh, honorable and uh, a death that you have under your own control. Uh, not a you know premature suicide, but they worked with, well, anyway, it was a, a, I had a great time standing there and chatting with the people involved in that. There was the Unitarian Universalist Social Justice uh, group and you could talk with them and under there right next to them was a group uh, supporting Palestinian um, relief and Palestinian and Israeli reconciliation efforts uh, there were places where you could buy there were booths where you could buy or just admire all sorts of UU uh, decor and paraphernalia chalices symbols art jewelry, stoles, banners, all sorts of stuff, um, and books. There were just books, huge. I mean, the bookstore was spread out. And in the back of all this, there was an area where you could buy food or drink, and there were some tables around. So if you got into a conversation with someone and you wanted to carry that on, you could go and get a drink, sit down at a table and say, are you sure you don't have any ministers? That we can <laughs> so that was pretty impressive too. Uh, and it, you had enough time in between all your other activities so you could go in and, and take part in that. So. I need to know this. I need to know. <laughs> okay. Got multiple screens here and all kinds of things here. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I am a white woman in her late 60s with long blonde hair and wearing reading glasses and I'm wearing a black dress with um, a strawberry pattern on it, sleeveless, okay? Um, business meetings, okay? The, um, okay. To me, the most impactful element of the business meetings was the commitment to the democratic process. Prior to GA, there was a year-long evaluation of proposals submitted to the UUA and hundreds of UUs participating on committees. Out of that process, a thoughtful selection of appropriate issues was brought before the delegates. Delegates had the opportunity to review all proposals prior to GA, including history and both pro and con positions. 
During the meetings, ample time was provided for both pro and cop positions to be voiced in person and through Zoom. I should stop here. There were uh, approximately 1,600 uh, people in attendance. I believe about 1,000 of them were delegates, plus an additional 1,500 online. So you can imagine the, the process of organizing all of that was just so impressive. Delegates had the opportunity to review all proposals prior to the GA. John mentioned getting lots of emails and videos and, and PDF proposals and so forth. Um, provided for both pro and con positions to, oh, pardon me. Um, I lost my place here. Okay, okay, uh, including history in both the pro and con positions. During the meetings, ample time is provided for pro and con positions to be voiced, including through Zoom, before any voting took place. Overall, the atmosphere was one of respect and consideration, even when there was a lively and sometimes emotional disagreement. Okay, I thought I was going to be able to read this on the screen, so I'm having to do it here. Um, Actions of immediate witness. These are um, these are issues that are adopted by the UUA to promote to congregations. So a national committee reviewed dozens of proposals to include in the UUA's immediate witness program. Those issues that congregations will be encouraged to support as well as to become prominent in the work of the UU social justice organization in Washington, DC and nationwide. These actions were debated and approved by delegates during one of the business meetings. We also received updates on the work of congregations, the UU Social Justice Organization, the UU Service Committee, and on past actions of immediate witness. I found these to be one of the most meaningful and moving segments of the GA. Okay, so preliminary approval of Article 2. Article 2 is a section in the UUA bylaw bylaws there, the UUA is incorporated in Massachusetts, and the state requires that every 15 years an organization review and revitalize their, their bylaws so that they're current. Um, the UUA is somewhat behind on this by about 10 years. And so this process was amazing. There's a great deal of discussion, even contention, over Article II amendments to the UUA bylaws. This amendment was seen as the most significant change in Unitarian Universalism in over 50 years. More than 900 recommendations were submitted to the Article II Commission, who reviewed every one before presenting a draft of the amendment language to the delegates. So just imagine, these are all volunteers plowing through 900 plus recommendations and took every single one of them into consideration. Many delegates spoke passionately for and against the evolution of our beloved seven principles to this new model of six inspirations, all based in love. Again, after nearly a full day of discussion, delegates voted to approve the preliminary adoption of the amendments, but this is not the end of the process. The, the committee will continue to work, the commission actually, will continue to work and present a final version of article two during the 2024 GA. This was one of the most passionately discussed and debated issues during the GA. The complete, there was a proposal for the complete disinvestment from fossil fuel industry by the UUA and subsequent reparations to affected communities. And this was the, although this proposal is ultimately not approved by the delegates, it created a great deal of passionate discussion on both sides of the issue. This proposal was presented primarily by UU youth if, if approved, it would have required the UUA to immediately disinvest from any fossil fuel investments and give the resulting funds in the form of reparations to impacted communities. The involved youth were deeply committed to the issue and were gravely disappointed at its failure. They even staged a brief protest in front of the stage after the vote. Overall, the proposal failed because it would have required the UUA to give all of the money away, including funds held in trust for organizations such as ours. The UUA is in the process of disinvestment and we are assured that this issue will continue to be addressed. So it was taken very, very seriously by everyone there. And the idea is that this investment takes a long time and it's very expensive. So um, 
the, I, I left felt because I voted against it personally, because I felt that the reparations part was not well articulated and could have resulted in unintended consequences. And the idea that the money, including money we hold in trust uh, to the UA would be basically gone. And so it, it's an interesting thing, and this is not the last we're gonna hear about this. Okay. Um, the very moving installation of UUA, UUA President Sophia Betancourt and a loving farewell to outgoing President Reverend uh, Susan Frederick Gray. We were deeply impressed with Reverend Betancourt and her abiding commitment to our beloved community. She's clearly a very much loved and respected UU leader with a great deal to offer in terms of intellect, administrative skill, and profound respect for UUs everywhere. Prior to her installment, there was a moving tribute to outgoing UUA President Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, which you can see on that website that we mentioned. The 2024 UUA General Assembly will be fully virtual, so we can all attend. Uh, an ongoing criticism of the GA is the cost, both to the UUA and to individual attendees. And again, we thank you for helping us be able to go. It was wonderful to hear that the 2024 GA will be fully virtual and allow many more UUs to attend and to participate. Okay, so thank you again. Let me get emotional. You are beloveds for giving us this tremendous gift. We love you. Thank you, Karen and John. And thanks for going and for representing us and for voting for us. And I know it's a lot of work. I went several years ago. And uh, by the end of it, you're pretty tired. It's exhausting. It, it really is. Because there's a lot um, intellectually and emotionally, there's a lot going on. Um, now it's time for uh, prayer and sacred silence. So, um, Pause, if you will, and consider people that you want to keep in your thoughts. Um, you can say their names aloud, or you can say them to yourself, and um, we'll hold them in silence. Blessings on all those named and, and spoken in your hearts and your minds. And uh, now we're going to do our candles and stones. So you're welcome to come up and light a candle of um, hope or a stone of forgiveness in our sacred waters. And I we've been doing it we don't have such a big crowd to organize this systematically but just come on up and how about it Thank you. 
now time for the offering. As the basket comes by, we appreciate anything that you can give to support the work of this church. Thank you. Uh, please stand and face the aisle. Sing with me the uh, blessing of the offering. Thank you. We thank you very much for your generosity. Um, at this point, I'm going to extinguish the chalice before the closing words. Um, we extinguish the chalice, but the water, the blood, the light of the um, the closing words I have today are from Adam Slate. Slade. Slate. What did I forget? Oh, I forgot the closing hymn. I'm so sorry. We do have another hymn to sing, and it's fabulous. So I have on the order of service, I had the closing words before the closing hymn. So sorry. Um, the closing hymn is in the paperback hymnal it's number 1028 the fire of commitment 1028 in the heel in the teal hymnal fire of commitment 1028 please rise as you Thank you. 
Yay. All right. I think it's time for the closing words. And I'm sorry if this presentation today was very natural. But yeah. We'll just call it, we'll just call it, yeah, organic. It just, exactly. Yeah. You know, just like the fruit that's not perfect, it tastes the best, right? Okay. This is um, from Adam Slate and it's called Sharing Our Blessings. We end our gathering with gratitude for camaraderie, shared wisdom, goodwill, and support that we extend to each other within this community. May we continue to bless each other with these gifts, and may we reflect those blessings back out into the world as we minister to those around us. Um, remember that we have coffee across the way in the building with the glass, big glass wall, and um, if you're wearing your name tag, I think that we're supposed to put them back in the files just outside those doors by, by your first name alphabetically. So have a super fantastic week. If you're a teacher like me, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we go back to work this week. School starts next week if you're a parent. So one more week and you are free. One more week and we are out. Have a great week.